Welcome back to the Sports Wrap, a special night on the Sports Wrap because we'll witness these are the trophies for the U.S. Open and the U.S. Senior Open. I'm a little fuzzy inside. Uh, don't mind me here. I am pleased to be joined by Mike Trostel, the USGA historian. Mike's right here. And Matt Sawicki, USGA Director of Championships. Guys, thanks so much for joining me. Um, let's start with this. The U.S. Senior Open coming to the Newport Country Club coming up soon. Why don't you guys provide details for that? 2020, we just announced it this last Tuesday. It's really exciting. Uh, 2020 will be a special year. It'll be the first year Phil Mickelson is actually eligible. But of course, Newport Country Club, where we hosted our first U.S. Open, first U.S. Amateur Championship all the way back in 1895. It really started a, a illustrious history of golf here in New England. Let me ask you just real quick about the trophy. We know Dustin Johnson, the defending U.S. Open champion. What does the trophy do throughout the course of the year? Does Dustin hold on to this? Is it something he can keep for the year? How does that work? So let's, let's back up to the first U.S. Open, 1895, as Matt mentioned in Newport. Horace Rollins wins at Newport Country Club, just a nine-hole course at that time. He wins $150. He wins custody of the U.S. Open trophy for a year, and he wins a gold medal. The trophy and the medal, still true, so they keep the, they keep the trophy uh, for one year, the medal forever. Obviously the prize money's bumped up a little bit from 150 just north of two million now. I saw that, I believe in 2022, the US Open will be at the Country Club we'll in, be Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, Massachusetts. How do you guys go about choosing the site for the tournament? Ultimately, it's a lengthy planning process. It starts with the golf course itself. It needs to provide the ultimate test to the players. So one that's gonna test their mental and physical resolve, make them use every shot uh, and club in their golf bag. Uh, but ultimately, it goes beyond that. We need an engaged community, and that's what Newport is. Uh, that's what Salem, Massachusetts is, where we're hosting this year's US Senior Open. But you need the infrastructure to park the people, uh, grandstands, and build a television compound uh, for all of our broadcast partners. So it's an involved process. We started two years ago uh, for two, 2022. So it's, it's a long and involved process. And a lot of times the U.S. Open is at a course that the public can play. Aaron Hills this year, Beth Page Black, uh, you've had it, that's a public course. Pebble Beach, the public can play. Uh, and the list goes on, I believe Pinehurst, is that on that list? Pinehurst, Pine Torrey Pines out in San Torrey Diego. Torrey Pines, yeah. it's another one. So uh, for golf people, that's a lot of fun. Let me ask you this, just, you know, off the record, but we're on the record. Um, do you guys prefer if a big name wins the U.S. Open or, you know, can Lucas Glover come come up and win and then you're just as happy? Yeah, I think it's a really good question. Um, you know, it, it's certainly fun to see when the best players in the world uh, compete for this trophy. And I think that's the beauty of the uh, U.S. Open championship is that it truly is open. That you have 156 players, but you start it more than 9,000 entries. You have 114 local qualifiers. That gets it down even more. 12 sectional qualifiers to get to the field of 156. So you, all you really need to enter the U.S. Open is a 1.4 handicap or better. Doesn't matter if you're male or even female, if you're, you know, if you're a professional or an amateur, it doesn't matter. So you certainly look at the names in the trophy and you see anywhere from Bob Jones up through Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholas and, and Tiger Woods, most recently Jordan Spieth and Dustin Johnson. That's great, but there's also some really cool stories about folks who came through local and sectional qualifiers which has happened twice, although it's been a while since 1969. So those under the radar stories are also really fun to watch. Okay, so just for informational purposes, 1.4 handicap, I'm nowhere near that. <laughs> but if you, if you had that hand, first of all, how do you know that the person actually has that and that they don't fabricate it? Do they have to be registered or? Yeah, so you actually go through an online entry process. Okay. We've had online only entries for seven years now, uh, and we, we verify every handicap that comes through. Uh, and, and it's very, very rare that we get a situation where a person's fabricated it to try and play it. Everyone's qualified, and as Mike said, there's some really neat stories about, you know, from bartenders to, to doctors to, to touring professionals, they climb their way and make it all the way to the U.S. And Open. And they actually play in the U.S. Open. That's correct. We've, we've had young kids, as young as 15, play. Uh, and, and it's a special moment to see someone that young all the way up into their 50s earn their right to play for our national championship. Incredible. Before we let you go, just about Newport again, 2020. What are you guys looking forward to in terms of that course, in terms of that area? Well, I'll start just looking back at the history of it. You know, the first two USJ championships, the Open and the Amateur. I mean, back at that point, it was played in October. The reason for that, it was supposed to be in September, but there was an America's Cup yacht race that bumped the U.S. Open and the U.S. Amateur by a month. 
it was incredible. Uh, and then to look at some of the other championships played there, Tiger Woods won his second U.S. Amateur there in 1995. Annika Sorenstam won her Women's Open, her third Women's Open in 2006. So I think we're really excited. It's a, you know, certainly here in Rhode Island, a, a great golf community. And you know, Matt, do you want to add anything on that? Well, it's great. Starting this year at Salem Country Club, where we've got the U.S. Senior Open this June, to Newport in 2020, to the Country Club in 2022, it's the opportunity for USGA to plant its flag here in New England and just add to that illustrious golf history that Mike mentioned before. U.S. Senior Open this year at the Salem Country Club in Massachusetts, June 26th to July 2nd, I believe, and then in 2020 in Newport. Uh, we have to thank the trophies, the guys for bringing them. Uh, Mike. Trostel, USGA historian, and Matt Sawicki, USGA director of championships. Guys, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having us. We'll be back on the Sports Wrap.